Hello, folks. Evangelist Matt Bullen, Supernatural Secrets. We're getting close to the end. Number 13, rugged determination. Rugged determination. This is a supernatural secret. They're all incredibly important, as you know. I believe that. But this one is so important. Rugged determination. Because you see, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day forward. He was anointed by the head prophet of Israel to be king. And from that moment on, everything was smooth. Everything was wonderful. David was successful. He was a great king. He was lauded. Oh, wait, no. No! From that day on, Satan came at him with everything he had. First he goes and, and is the harp player for King Solomon because Solomon has rebelled against the Lord and a, a spirit of torment has come upon Saul. I'm sorry, Saul. And David plays for him. And then Saul gets more and more and more paranoid, becomes David's enemy, the king. You live, you, imagine this, you live in a nation and the king, absolute authority. The king wants you dead. He has all the army. Nobody can tell him no. He wants you dead. Oh my goodness. 1 Samuel 18, 28. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and how much his daughter Michael loved him, Saul became even more afraid of him and he remained David's enemy for the rest of his life. You're so blessed, David. God chose you. He anointed you. He said you're going to be the king. He killed the giant Goliath for you. And now you're famous all over. You are so blessed. But get ready. Spiritual warfare is a real thing. And without the supernatural secret of rugged determination, you will never make it, King David. 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. Three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziklag, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and Ziklag. They had crushed Ziklag and burned it to the ground. David's fleeing from the king, Saul. He's fleeing for his life for years. And he finally gathers together a group of men. And now the Amalekites come and destroy their city. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, Ahinoam and from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all of his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Rugged determination comes from finding strength in the Lord your God. Just because we're chosen of God, just because we're anointed for a mission, does not mean everything's going to be prosperous, everything's going to be great. No, in fact, so many horrible things will come against us that people will wonder, why in the world do you follow that Jesus guy? It's unlucky to be a devoted Christian. You should go do something else. Everything bad comes at you. I often joke with myself that if I only tell people about all the miracles in my 38 years of ministry, they're going to tell me, you're the luckiest man I've ever heard of. And... If I only tell them about the spiritual warfare and the trials and the absolute stunning, horrific things that have come upon me and my family in 38 years of ministry, 
If I only tell them that part, they're going to say, you are the most unlucky man I've ever heard of. I'm getting the heck away from you. It's rugged determination. That's supernatural secret. David finally overcomes that, becomes king, is anointed again over uh, Judah and then Israel. Psalm 92.10. And then he raises his family. He has much success. And then one of his sons, Absalom, turns against him, tries to kill him, runs him out of the palace. He has to run for his life, his own son. Another son rapes one of his daughters. Horrible things. Spiritual warfare is real. The enemy hates the anointed. The enemy of our souls hates the anointed. You have to have a rugged determination. A supernatural rugged determination. Encourage Jing yourself in the Lord. 2 Samuel 18.33 Absalom is killed. The king was overcome with emotion. He went up to the room over the gateway and burst into tears. And as he went, he cried, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. As many hard things as Satan can throw at you if you are a sold out warrior for Jesus, he will. The kitchen sink, the faucets, the cabinets, he'll throw it all. Because we're in a war. I've told you about that. You must be a ruthless warrior. And you must have rugged determination. George Mueller. The only way to learn strong faith is to endure great trials. Sorry about that. The only way to learn strong faith is to endure great trials. I have learned my faith by standing firm amid severe testings. George Mueller. Over 40 times in the New Testament, you find the word endure. Endure. Forty times endure. First Corinthians 9.12, Paul said, We endure all things so that we will cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Second Timothy 2.10, For this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ. If we endure, we will also reign with him. Thinking eternal. 2 Timothy 3.11, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. And what about our Lord Jesus? I've told you, it only took him three and a half years to get falsely accused and executed. Much unluckier than me. I've been at this 38 years, I'm still alive. Barely some days, but still alive. Luke 9, 51. As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus, if you go to Jerusalem, they're going to kill you. He knew that. That's why he resolutely set out for Jerusalem rugged determination to complete the mission. Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2 through 4, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. 
After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Hebrews 12, 2 through 4. Rugged determination. Rugged determination. Our whole ministry, my wife and I, our whole marriage has been one spiritual warfare after the other. But then all hell broke loose upon us in 2007. In 2002, I was hired to come to Houston, Texas from the mountains of New Mexico and build a $220 million, 25-story hotel for the 2004 Super Bowl in Houston, Texas. And we came knowing that God was only doing that to get us here because of the ministry we would have in America's fourth largest city. And sure enough, not too long after we got here, I became the pastor of, with some other pastors of a church. And for three years, we had a marvelous ministry. I went to my first Trace Diaz weekend, three-day weekend, and got lit on fire. Gasoline on a bonfire, baby. Three of the best years of my life in ministry. And then, and then a Saul came into our camp. A nationally known speaker and author came into our church, rose up into a place of pastorship. Then we started a church plant in Tomball, Texas, and he rose up and he was not satisfied with sharing senior pastor leadership in that church. He began to spread all kinds of discontentment, disunity. Long story short, I can't even legally go into it all with you. He got my whole family excommunicated. Ex not executed, thankfully. Felt like it. Excommunicated. They sent registered letters to every one of my kids, even my 12-year-old daughter, saying, you have been excommunicated from this church that we founded in our living room that was growing leaps and bounds, had been up to 300 people. It had gotten up to 100 people in our living room. That's how big of a house we had at the time. We got excommunicated. We said, okay, we're just going to have church with our five kids and my wife and I on our couch. The next Sunday, 12 families showed up and said, we're going to have church with you on your couch. Started a new church, but we were, we were broken. We were, we were hurt. My kids who had worked so hard for years in church were wondering if this was such a good idea following this Nazarene Jesus, Jesus Christ. We started the new church. God sent our African daughter, dropped her on our doorstep. Looked like things were going to get better and better and better. Took my first trip to Colombia. Looked like things were getting better and better. We were beginning to go international. We started the adoption of three Colombian orphans. Came home from my third trip to Colombia to find out that the worship leader of my church that I pastored, that I had started again in my living room, was sexually assaulting his two adopted daughters. All hell broke loose in that church. I can't go into it. Legally, I can't go into it. Law enforcement came in. It impacted my kids in ways I can't describe. One son went off to the Navy. The other son, thankfully, married a godly woman and is still serving the Lord today. They are together. The son that went off in the Navy married one of those daughters that had been sexually abused by her dad. Years later, she left him to become a lesbian. A few weeks later, he ended up on Fox News, naked, swinging a sword over his head. 
lost his mind, still, still out there. He's come home for a couple of years and then he's back out there again. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Oh, spring of 2010, when all this was happening, when our second church started in my living room, was disintegrating before our eyes, our African daughter ran away, was gone for a year. We didn't hear from her for one year. Because she ran away, the government canceled our adoption of our three children in Colombia. We lost ever bringing them to the United States. We're still their parents in Colombia. Now they're all grown. Broken. The next Sunday after our daughter, African daughter ran away, we shut down the church. I resigned. The man that excommunicated us out of the original church all this time was still coming after me. He got a, a famous uh, website that hosts audio sermons to take down 180 of my sermons that were being listened to in 102 countries. Eventually, he was able, because I had hired some men from that church back in the day to work for me as a superintendent building high-rise buildings. I was building the headquarters for Minute Maid in Sugarland, Texas. He, he was able to cause disunity among them, and I got fired from a six-figure income job. We lost our house. We lost our church. I didn't know if I was going to make it. For two years, I wanted to die. I prayed to die. I didn't want to take my own life. I wanted God to. <laughs> I wanted to get a diagnosis of three months to live. I'm not kidding. I wanted to go to heaven. I was done. I had been serving the Lord for 30 years, 28 years. I, that was good enough, right? I can go to heaven now. Two of my daughters went off and got into all kinds of trouble. Horrible trouble. I can't even go into it. It's their story to tell someday. My son lost his mind. Still out there. It's his story to tell someday. We were so hurt. Sunday, our church closed down. My wife went to bed and slept for 36 hours straight. I would go and put a mirror under her nose to see if there was humidity, see if she was still breathing. I couldn't wake her up. Three days and three nights she slept. Adrenal glands gone. Yes, I've told you in the last 12 episodes about miracle after miracle after miracle. But this supernatural secret, if we didn't have this supernatural secret, rugged determination, none of those miracles would have ever happened because we'd have quit 11 years ago. We'd have quit 15 years ago. We'd have quit 25 years ago. Thank you, Jesus. We haven't quit because of a supernatural secret called rugged determination. Some of my kids are still going down a dangerous path. But God, they cannot run my prayers. My wife's in the prayer closet every day crying, praying for them. They cannot run her prayers. Their brother and sisters that are following Jesus passionately pray for them every day. They cannot run their prayers. Two years, I wanted to die. I was still preaching. I was still winning people to Christ. I was still counseling. We were still counseling families at our dinner table three and four nights a week. I was just dead inside. 
Thank God it wasn't me doing it. It was the Holy Spirit through me. Thank God the Holy Spirit was still working. Because I was still showing up. I was just dead. I wanted to go to heaven. It was too hard. I didn't have any fight left. I had fought Satan until my hand was too tired to lift my sword. Until one day, I was driving up to north, far northwest Houston, out in the country to go preach. My oldest daughter, Rebecca, was riding with me. She would pray and I would preach. I'm headed up there, very quiet in the car. And Rebecca looks over at me and she says, Daddy, don't be so sad. I said, I'm trying, baby. I'm trying. She said, Daddy, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't get to see Jesus until they were in the fire. And Daddy, seeing Jesus is worth the fire. Woo! Daniel chapter 3, I knew it well. The whole chapter raced through my mind. I said, oh my goodness. They didn't bow down. They got thrown into the furnace. But there was a fourth man, baby, walking in the furnace. A fourth man that Nebuchadnezzar said looked like a son of the gods. <laughs> the fourth man in the fire. I was instantly healed. I said, you're right. And they got thrown in, bound up in their coats and in their, and in their cloaks and bound up. The, the th soldiers that threw them in died. It was so hot, throwing them in. And then Nebuchadnezzar sees him walking around with the fourth man. And he calls them and they step out of the fire unbound. Only thing that burned, baby, was their bonds. Rugged determination. We know our God will deliver us from you, Nebuchadnezzar, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow. That is some rugged determination to follow God, whatever the cost. They stepped out. They didn't even smell like smoke. She said, Daddy, seeing Jesus is worth the fire. I said, oh my goodness. I've got to see the hand of God. I've got to see Jesus in the last four years, five years, like never. I've just been focusing on the fire. Not a, instead of the fourth man. I was healed. I was instantly healed. The cloud lifted. Guess what I preached on when Rebecca and I got to the place where we were driving? Daniel chapter 3. Secrets of the Furnace. <laughs> Seeing Jesus is worth the fire. That changed my life. C.S. Lewis said, Affliction is often that thing which prepares an ordinary person for some sort of an extraordinary destiny. That's right. After that Jesus in the fire conversation, Rebecca went to L.A. and had a year of amazing ministry. Then went to Zambia for two years and had amazing ministry. Then came home in the last five years, has been traveling the world with me, continent after continent, seeing miracle after miracle. What if she had have quit? and not seeing Jesus in the fire? What if she hadn't spoken that prophecy to me that day in the car? I've preached all over the world since that conversation, seen miracle after miracle after miracle. What if she hadn't told me, Daddy, Jesus, seeing Jesus is worth the fire? Rugged determination. Rugged determination. 
My daughter, Brooke, spent three years in Colombia serving the Lord, doing wonderful things, seeing miracles. Yes, she still has her dark times. God's not done with her yet. I made 28 trips to Colombia. We helped 35 orphans, not our three, but 35 others get adopted into Christian homes in the Houston area. And our three, we've helped them go to school, we've helped them, and they are our children and they are doing wonderful in Colombia. We've done gospel crusades on four continents. Affliction is often that thing which prepares an ordinary person for some sort of an extraordinary destiny. We came home, 2016 was a miracle. I've told you, 2015 blew up, 2014 blew up, 2015, 2016. We came home, I came home from the greatest crusade of my life, February 2017. Our family sat down, we had a family meeting. All my biological kids were at that meeting, four of them anyway. We had a fabulous meeting. We made a video talking about how 2017 was going to be the year of miracles. Put it out on Facebook. The year of miracles. Oh, it was. We just didn't know. The enemy had some more up his sleeve. April 11th, as you know, 2017, I went out to do a little job for $225. Don't judge me. $225 is half a plane ticket to Columbia, okay? <laughs> climbed up 20 feet in the air. Just before I climbed the ladder, I pulled my phone out of my pocket and wired the last $1,400 to Liberia to put the roof on Mercy's house. My phone in my pocket, climbed to the top of the ladder. Last thing I remember. Fell 20 feet, landed on concrete on my face. I've told you. Broke my back in three places, shattered my face, brain bleeds, brain contusions, brain off center, on and on and on. Four infections, sepsis crushed organs, lungs, eight broken ribs, collarbones, shoulder. But then y'all prayed. My family prayed. Suddenly, on May 4th, 2017, all of y'all looked in the furnace and there was a fourth man! There was a fourth man in the fire! And I stepped out. Yeah, I'm blind in one eye, legally blind in the other. Yeah, I can't remember which day of the week it is. When's the last time my wife took me to Marble Slab and I had banana ice cream? I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it was a long time ago and it needs to happen again soon. Came home from the hospital, walked out of the hospital after 28 25 days in a coma, walked out after I woke up three weeks later. Came home for three months, getting better. And then Hurricane Harvey sent six feet of water through our house on August 27th, 2017, and washed everything away. I have a secret to tell you that's part of the supernatural secret, rugged determination. The only way Satan can beat you is if you quit. It's up to you. He can't win. The only way he can win is if you quit. Just don't quit. Keep swinging. Keep swinging. The test of a Christian's character is what he does after he comes to the blockade in the road and what his attitude is after everything has left him except Jesus. 
You will never know down here that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have left. Lester Roloff. Fourth man in the fire, baby. I can't be stopped. The redhead can't be stopped. My kids can't be stopped. Mission Critical can't be stopped. Hurricanes falling to my death. National figures coming after us for years, trying to ruin us. Our son losing his mind, wanting to kill me. It goes on and on. I can't, I can't even tell you all of it. You can't stop us. You can't be stopped. Because we understand the supernatural secret of rugged determination. Don't quit. One of my heroes from church history that best exemplifies this. You have to go read up on Ed Norman, Ann Judson, Sarah Judson, and Emily Judson to hear some more, but the one I'm going to tell you about today is William Carey. The man we call the founder of modern missions. William Carey was a shoemaker in whom God lit a fire for India. Eight years of fighting against his denomination, he finally gets them to let him go to India. He goes to India in 1793. His wife and refused to go with him, his wife and his two sons. He says, I've got to go. He'd been fighting his denomination for eight years. Finally gets the chance to go. And his wife says, I'm not going. He goes down to get on the ship. He's like, I got to go. I got to obey my master. I was bought with a price. I'm not my own. I've got to go. Gets down to the ship. Can't do it. Can't leave his wife and two sons. Turns around and goes back. Begs her, please come. She says, no. He says, I've got to go. Goes down to the ship. Can't do it. Turns around, goes back to the house, begs her. She says, no. Goes back to the ship, can't do it. Turns around and comes back. Three times he came back. She finally said, yes, I'll go. 1793, they go to India. Shortly after arriving, he was swindled out of all his money. He went to work in an indigo mill. He was misunderstood by his supporters for going to work. They thought that he had gone to India to get rich, working in the indigo mill. So they cut off his support. His five-year-old son, Peter, dies. His wife loses her mind and even tries to kill him at one point. She dies. Seven years of preaching before he has his first convert. There's floods. He finally, his son grows up, gets married to a lovely woman, and they have a baby. And then they're crossing the river, all of them together, and his daughter-in-law and his grandchild die in the river crossing the drowned. He discovers that he has a supernatural talent for translating the Bible into English. He translates by hand the Bible into 40 languages all by hand it, on paper in the early 1800s. Makes copy after copy to win the people of India to Christ. One night, his warehouse where he houses all of his handwritten Bibles in 40 languages burns to the ground. So he starts over. But God. When William Carey died at age 73 in 1834, 
he had led in the translation and printing of the scriptures into 40 languages. He had been a college professor in India and had founded a college at Sarampur. He had seen India open its doors to missionaries and he had seen many, many converts for Christ. J.D. Freeman once said, the Christian church owes more to William Carey and his mission than to any other man or movement since the days of the Apostle Paul. What was William Carey's supernatural secret? He once said, I can plod. I can persevere in any definite pursuit. And to this I owe everything. Rugged determination. The man could not be stopped. How Satan must have pulled his hair out if he has hair. For trying to stop William Carey and keep Satan's domination over India. Because this man would not stop. Rugged determination. C.H. Spurgeon once said, Plod away, for infinite possibilities lie, lie concealed within the least work done for Jesus in the power of the Holy Ghost by a sincere heart. Plod away, Christian. C.H. Spurgeon. There's only one way. You can fail at the mission of God, no matter what hell throws at you. And that's if you quit. If you don't quit, nothing in hell can stop you. That's the truth. Rugged determination. And I want to close with this. Don't you dare. My beloved brothers and sisters, my fellow warriors, don't you dare let any sin, any disappointment, any addiction, any tragedy, any obstacle, any betrayal, any abuse, any anything stop you. Don't you dare. Look for the fourth man in the fire. And don't you dare. Let anything keep you from your adventure with the fourth man. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let us keep seeing you in the fire. And let us be rugged in our determination to finish well. In your mighty name, amen. All right, if you survived that, Episode 14, Remarkable Camaraderie. See you then.